everybody. Hi, it's Becky for PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. All right, we are getting ready to do Santa number two of our Santa table runner. So I wanted to do a little Q&A first and because you guys had a lot of questions after the first, well not a lot, but a few and I thought they were pretty smart questions. So I'm going to go ahead and answer those now, even though I may have gone ahead and put them in the comments. Not everybody will have read the comments or anything like that. I want to show you, this is Santa number one. And when I did this Santa, I sprung a surprise on you guys and used a metallic thread. And a lot of you asked me, did I slow the machine down? No, I didn't slow the machine down. The only thing I needed to do was to change the needle from a 7511 to a 9014. It needed a little bit larger needle in order to accommodate that metallic thread. That thread is called King Star and it is exclusive to Dime Designs and Machine Embroidery and it is made in Japan. It is not the same as Dime's exquisite metallic thread. That's different. The King Star thread is actually manufactured, I hope I get this right, it's actually manufactured using silk as its core. It is the same thread that is used in those gorgeous kimonos over in Japan. So they do a lot of embroidery and a lot of metallic embroidery over there and that King Star thread is used for that. And so because the core of the thread is silk and then the metallic fibers are wrapped around the silk, it's very pliable and you don't need to slow down your machine. There is a link to it below in the description box and I believe they also have a set that is patriotic, that is red, silver, and blue. So you might take a look at that as well if you're interested in getting this. But this just ran beautifully. You guys saw, if you watch Santa number one, the buckle is the last thing to stitch. And it didn't have a single break. And it was making, really, you can tell, quarter inch wide satin stitches. It did a good underlay. It did great. This thread is wonderful. The last time I used this thread, I was making a video of a lace angel and it sold out like that. So if you want any of this metallic thread, you need to get it because people are gonna watch this. And the link that I have in the description box is to a set that's got red in it and green and aqua, I think. Uh, it, it, it will work well for Christmas. Okay, so no, I did not uh, slow down the machine. Question number two, what type of batting did I use? Y'all, that was scrap. Uh, I usually use Hobbs 8020, and that's what that one was, I think. If it wasn't, it was a different scrap, and it's probably Quilter's Dream. I don't know, scrap. Doesn't matter. Not a big deal. Some of you asked, uh, you know, what's the link to the bobbins that I use? What's the link to... Whatever. I went ahead and added all the links in of all the products that I use in the description box of the video. And I will copy that same description box on all five of these videos. We might do six to put the borders on. I'm not sure um, how that's going to work. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, and then I had a request, uh, a question, what thread did I use? I am not a thread purist by any means okay I use whatever I have available and I just look for the color that I want so I used a mix of poly Madeira poly neon and uh, isocord those are the ones that I had on hand and I reached for first and I found them and and whatnot so that's what I did if you are just now joining us if you want to go to the video for Santa number one the first 13 minutes and 30 seconds of the video, you will see things to take into consideration when you're determining the size you want to make, what kind of hoop you're going to use, and then I go very quickly through the instructions, and the instructions for steps 1 through 19 are the same for construction for all five Santas. And then the only thing that's different on them is the uh, embellishments on uh, that, that go across the shirts of each one whether it's ho ho ho, I think there's a plum pudding, and there are presents, and then there is a Merry Christmas. So one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. I had mentioned in Santa number one, I thought it would be cute to do tropical Santas and turn that into a table runner down at the coast. Well, 
I went digging around and I made this guy this morning. Check him out. So I did his hat and his pom-pom. This is the 8x12. It's a little bit bigger. I did his uh, brim and his pom-pom in a flannel and it worked out so cute. And then these are, uh, tro I would call them tropical. They're batiks. This is a batik and this is a batik. But look, he's got snowflakes on his shirt. How cool, huh? You know, it's had to have been three, four years now. Missouri Star offered a grab bag. And, uh, you know, here, throw us your money and we'll send you something. And it, there was no clue. And so, but they guaranteed it would be worth it. Well, I received in the mail a bundle of these batiks. And they were the wildest things. I don't know who the designer is, okay? And there was all kinds. So there's Santa's shirt right there. But, and there's some purple snowflakes. There were all kinds of these winter and Christmassy. Look at these reindeer on here, on the red. Isn't that amazing? They're all batiks. There's some more reindeer. They're upside down. But um, I was like, well, what am I going to do with these? <laughs> I had no clue. <laughs> I had no clue what I was going to do with these shirt, with these, um, you know, there's like pine leaves. No clue. And so, oh, here's a beautiful orange with that reindeer. Isn't that cool? So I was, I was sitting here this morning and I'm like, oh. Man, those would make awesome Hawaiian shirts for my for my tropical Santa, right? And then I'm going to try and um, and change the wording for Santa number five from Merry Christmas to the uh, Hawaiian um, Mele. Can we? You guys know what I'm talking about. There's a song. <laughs> I have to look it up. I apologize. You, you girls in Hawaii, I know y'all watch. And you know what's so funny? Um, Mele Kamiki, is it Maka or Laka? Anyway, I know y'all are yelling at the camera. It's this! I have no clue. I'll have to look it up. Sorry. But anyway, the background, this tropical-looking watery background, I actually got from Hawaii. Almost, but it came from Hawaii. It really did. I happened to pick it up this one and This other one that I, I'm going to use. I Actually picked these fabrics up at quilt passions booth at the 2016 Houston quilt festival so four years ago they have they had I don't know if they still do but this card is from back then is that right? Was it 2016? There's a date on my receipt. It's from K-A-I-L-U-A, Kalua, Kona, Hawaii. How about that? Huh? Oh, 2015. I've had these longer than that. I got these October 30th, 2015. It is from Quilt Passions, and that was in the King Kamehameha Mall at the time. So, my Tropical Santa, all the backgrounds will be actually from Hawaii. But I think that's pretty cool. I thought he turned out pretty cute. He's got a little bit darker cheeks than the other one. Just a little bit. You know, he's been out in the sun. Okay, so let's get started. We are, oh, oh, and one other thing. This guy, this guy, I did on the 10 needle this morning. I'm still playing with it and trying to figure it out. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Turned out pretty good. I like it. So I will be making two Santas every day. I will be making my uh, my traditional one with you on a video on the Luminaire, and I will be making my uh, my tropical Santas on the new my new brother PR ten fifty five um, the the ten needle entrepreneur. Now I'm not going to take a video of that because you guys I'm still hunting and poking around on that thing. You know, that's got a learning curve on it, and, and it's new to me, and it's, um, you know, the only, 
I used to have a Janome 7 needle and the only thing in common that they have is that they both have multiple needles and that's kind of it because the interfaces were different completely between the two machines. But um, this one's pretty easy, pretty intuitive, and I'm, but I'm trying to figure out how to make stops. So I'm, I'm looking on YouTube for that too. So Okay, so we're ready to get started doing some stitching. Several of you had asked questions about how I do my thread changes. I really didn't show them in the first video. What I normally do is trim the thread behind the first thread guide, which happens to be the telescoping stand that is actually on the machine. And it feeds from the thread tree that I have behind the machine. The way I use my thread tree, I'll show you. I have all of the threads that I'm going to use in this particular design already lined up and ready to go. So they're not necessarily in the right order that I'm going to use them in, but they're all here and they're ready to go. And on top of the thread tree is a little spring. Let me come up so you can see this. There's a, there are grooves up here that hold the thread. The thread comes up from the back of the tree and then I just, this will cut your thread, but I just push the thread in there a little bit so it holds the tail up out of the way, okay? Now, when it's time to change threads, for instance, here is the gold metallic from the belt buckle from Santa number one. Well, I want to put on gray to, because that's going to be the first of the stippling that we do in the background. So I just cut the thread behind where the telescope is and I just do a single loop and tie a single knot with the two threads and pull it fairly tight and then I will pull it through from the needle out. Now there is a thread guide up here that is designed to be used when making a bobbin. Well, I like to run my thread through there from the thread tree. So it will go through the telescoping uh, thread guide on down to the one that's supposed to be for the bobbin. You don't have to, that's just the way I like to do it. Then I like to grab the thread from in front of the needle. If there was a needle in here, I still have to, I'm putting my needle back, the 7511. And then I just pull it through and it feeds through the entire machine so easily and then I just tie it off right here. And you can re-thread your machine in seconds like that. Let me put that other needle back in now. Okay, I'm gonna thread the needle. That's perfect every time. And then this time, I brought the design over on an official Power Tools with Thread USB stick. You gotta have one in your sewing room. So, I'm going to put this into the machine. And let me show you how we're gonna transfer the file. I'm gonna go to embroidery and the memory, which is the pocket. And now I'm gonna touch the symbol for USB. And I'm looking for Santa 2. There he is. Doesn't include enough thread information, that's fine. That's it, I'm gonna hit set and embroidery and we are ready to go. Again, I'm going to repeat stitch number one because I'm going to do it twice. Once will be a placement line for the batting and the next will be the batting tack down. I want to put my batting down now. This is again just a scrap. I can now see where the placement needs to be. And I'm going to go back and stitch number one again. I'm going to hit the needle plus minus. And since that was only the very first stitch, I'm just going to press zero. And that's going to want to start all over again. I'll tell it OK and tell it to go.
you can see here it's on stitch number one. The next stitch is the placement line for the background. I'll show you here in the luminaire too how you know where you're at. This box right here will tell you what the next stitch is going to be. So because this is in black, that tells me this is the tack down for the background. So I'm going to put my fabric over the line, make sure everything is covered. Now we're going to tack down the background. Now I'm going to trim away the bottom edge of the background fabric, just like we did in the first one. There we go. And now we are ready to do the all over stippling. to do the placement line for the shirt so I'm going to do a thread color change. Uh oh. I accidentally bumped the screen and managed to cancel out the design and I'm not even halfway done. So I'm going to start all over. I'll hit embroidery. I'm going to go to the pocket for memory, my USB, Santa 2, and set and embroidery. Okay, here's where this is invaluable knowledge to do this. So here's the needle plus minus. All right, I'm going to jump ahead until we get to the stitch that is just after the stippling. So I'm going to go one, two. All right, there's the stippling. So next. Did you see that? I'll me back up to the stippling so you can see it. So this, this box right here tells you where you are. So handy. One more. Okay, now I'm ready to do a thread change. Don't tap the screen. Goodness, Becky. Okay, I cut it back here. I hold it in the back. I cut it here. And then I put this back up into the spring to hold it. And then I'm going to grab the red thread from the spring and pull it. Sometimes it's easier if I take this one and kind of drop it down and then tie them off up here so I've got a lot of slack. It just makes life simpler. And that way I'm tying it in between this telescoping thread guide and this one right here. Then I'm going to, from in front of the needle, I'm going to pull it and it comes right through the machine and I'm done. Shirt fabric over the placement line. Make sure it's even. It's going to do the placement line for the hat, but first I need to trim away this part right here. on the top of the shirt. There we go. Okay, we can keep going. Now it's going to do the satin stitching on the shoulders and on the outside of the hat.
Okay, time to do the outline of the face. I'm going to change my thread color to white. Placement line for the face. I'm going to trim the fabric around the face. Time for the placement line for the pom-pom and the hat band. Let's see. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be kind of froggy here. I'm going to watch this. I think that'll work. Hold on a second here. So I'm at the tack down of the pom-pom and the hat band. I'm going to... I know my fabric is big enough to cover both. I have two pieces of fabric. I think it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this for the pom-pom and the hat band. Let you watch what I'm doing here. I'm going to skip a step. the placement stitch for the beard. I'm going to jump ahead one to the tack down for the beard and just let it go. Now I'm going to trim it all up at one time. I just noticed that the camera wasn't on when I started doing the cheeks. You have to, if you do what I did, where you put the entire face, let me pull this out. If you do what I did, where you put your fabric down from top to bottom and you cover the whole thing, you will have to trim away the layer of fabric that is covering your face, which is fine. It does, it's not that big of a deal. It all comes out the same in the end, but uh, you learn a new skill that is known as reverse applique. So that's kind of what I did right there. Going against the grain, living on the edge. switching back to white for the 10 minutes it's going to take to stitch all of Santa's satin stitching on the hat and the beard. And we will let it get started. And off we go. I'm going to put the camera on pause. And I'll see you back when it's finished. I've done a thread change so we can stitch the nose. Now I'm going to do another thread change so we can stitch the eyes and the mouth. Okay, it is time for the ho 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 and I am going to change to that King Star green metallic thread and I need to change out my needle. Here we go.
we're all finished. Now we're just going to pop it out of the hoop. Another viewer had a question when we talked about trimming to one half inch. So a lot of times you will trim embroidery designs to a quarter inch. This outer seam line right here, we're going to one half inch over from that all the way around is what we're going to cut. So can you see that? Let me get real close so you can see. This outer stitching line right here, one half inch outside of that all the way around. And that's it. That turned out pretty good. Also, several of you told me that your embroidery files included SVG files. I double checked mine and did not see SVG files. However, I did see FCM files. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.